What's up, everybody? This is a Ask PJ, although I'm going to be doing all the questions asking in this one. And I have a very, very special guest with me, and I will try to not make her embarrassed with the announcement that I give for her. But I've known her for so long, and I think so highly of her. She needs to have a proper, <laughs> a proper introduction. So this is actually the longest tenured uh, female athlete with Black Soul Labs. Uh, she is a very, very close friend of mine. She is an IVB pro. She is a mom. She is a very dear friend. She's a coach. She is very, very beautiful on the inside and out. And I will say I've, I've made posts about this before, um, but she is truly as loyal as a person could possibly be, and that means everything to me. This is Steph Mahoy. And... Before you, you keep talking or start talking, <laughs> people consistently call you Steph Maho. Yes. Tell everyone the proper way to say your name. It is Mahoy, like with a Y on the end, like Chips Ahoy. Chips Ahoy. Now, the, the reason that I always remember this is because I always think of like Hawaii. It is. It's Hawaiian. And uh, she's Hawaiian. So it's easy for me to remember it um but i guess the way it's spelled it looks like maho i, mean, I, I just get so it. you know i always <laughs> correct people yeah uh, so anyway i'm used to it by now <laughs> before we i'm gonna get into a little bit of, of your history and stuff and um then we'll talk about what you have going on now okay um but you haven't been down here in a while and you went to the old blackstone labs i did i autopiloted there so I know you've been to that other one a few times, but this is actually where we started. So the very first building uh, was this building all the way down on the end. So we're kind of in the middle now. We have this side of the building. When we first started and I moved out of the uh, spare bedroom at my house, this is the original Blackstone Labs. So okay. Come full, for yeah, full that's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. And people are always like, oh, you know, where's the old building? And I'm like, it's literally two down driveways. Down the street, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so Steph was like, I'm here. And I'm like, I'm here. And she was like, I think I'm in the old, <laughs> the old building. <laughs> um, but it brought back a lot of memories of uh, standing outside of the old building and you coming down. And there was one time you came down and I think you had a flat tire or something. Was, on yeah, the way. that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was a lot of uh, a lot of history be between be between us. So I don't want to do all the talking. So I am going to basically have you tell everybody a little bit. We're going to do a little bio time. Okay. Even though I think most of our, our uh, followers know who you are. So why don't we start out with uh, where you were born and where you grew up and then how you got into working out. Okay. Um, I was born in Hawaii. Uh, I was born and raised there. I left for college at 18 and went to California for a year at USC and um, – kept moving west I lived up in Oregon for 10 years after that and then Chicago and then finally got down to Florida I've been here now for 11 or 10 years so um, when you were in Hawaii what was it like growing up in Hawaii I've never been there that's like one of my <sighs> dream places to go I mean you don't really appreciate it till you leave mm -hmm. um it's very laid back lots of outside stuff I mean I did everything you know uh, canoe paddling in high school you know lots of outdoor I surfed you know I mean and it's just a really like laid-back culture so it was really awesome to grow up that way and you don't realize it till you move away and everything's very fast-paced but um, you moved to and <laughs> to me I feel like California where, where I was was very slow were you in <laughs> Southern California I was in LA at USC so I was in like the middle of everything and it was like culture shock Hor I mean, a horrible, like, I, I didn't like it. I, I love the school. It was mm -hmm. a great institution, but I transferred. I hated it in yeah. California. I hate it. I didn't like it. I thought it was very pretentious, yes. and I just, it wasn't me. So, obviously, I left. Um, and What made you pick that school? Um, it was kind of like a family. Always, you know, grew up cheering for USC mm -hmm. and... Um, I was looking at either, I was looking at West Coast schools from Hawaii, you know, so I applied to like every school except Oregon. I applied to like University of Washington, UCLA, 
all these Pepperdine schools on the West Coast. And somehow I didn't apply to Oregon, but then I ended up moving there and lived there for 10 years after. But why didn't you want to go to Oregon? I don't know. I just didn't look at any Oregon schools. Um, what were you? Uh, what was your major when you were going to college? Uh, I started with kinesiology. I wanted to do physical therapy. And then I transferred, actually transferred to a Utah school and was going to do dietetics um, before I went to Oregon, where I ended up um, going into nursing. So it was Did always you, science-based stuff. Were you playing uh, sports at that point? No, not you in college. You just wanted to work with the yeah. body? Yeah, I mean, I always played um, sports. Soccer was like my main sport growing up, and I started working out a lot. Um, actually, my senior year, I was going to do a figure competition because I didn't have a bikini back then. Yeah. I never went through with it, and then I guess that's kind of how it segued as I always worked out. I always um, was training, but not really for like an aesthetic goal, more just like because I enjoyed it. And then when they came out with bikini in like 2009, I was like, I want to do that. And so I did that. That's how I started. I think my first one was 2010. And I did my first one. And I was like, I want to go all the way with this. When and you so, did your first one, where was it? And how did you place? It was in Oregon. Um, I got first place. But there was two people in my class. So it's, <laughs> it was one of those. And you know, I look back at my pictures and even the clients I have now when they're going into their first shows, I'm like, wow, if only you knew. Like, you look so much better than I did on my first show. You know, people don't realize that, is that we all start somewhere. And it was night and day. Like, but I just thought that was, that was it. I knew immediately that I wanted to pursue it. And so that's how I started. And it, you know. Did anybody coach you? Yeah, I had a coach. Um, he's my first coach was like, he's still a really good friend of mine. Um, mentor, you know, he, he helped me kind of get started until I moved out of Oregon. And then I, I joined a different team and kind of did some of the um, political things, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, it took me three years, but I finally turned pro in 2013 after 23 shows nine national shows i think it's very important that people understand that because i actually was using you as an example the other day um i don't uh, i don't want to put her on blast and say her name but we have a uh, a very very good um bikini competitor mm -hmm. and she just did nationals and it, it, she's won a bunch of shows um i believe she got uh, i think it was something like 10 right condition was fantastic um and she said to me, uh, what do you think that my plan should be? And I told her she was thinking about taking most of this year off and then just doing nationals. Mm -hmm. And I said, in my opinion, if you're going to take that much time off, you should just start next year and start out with junior USAs, see how good you do there, mm -hmm. and probably plan on just keep on going. Yeah. And the reason I explained that to her, and I said, you're fortunate in the sense, and this isn't to kiss my own ass, I was like that. I will sponsor your shows because a lot of sponsors won't do that. Realistically, the odds of going in and just winning and getting your pro card are very, very slim. Oh, yeah. Sometimes happens. Very rarely, but it's, yeah. It sometimes happens, but most of the time, you got to just keep going. And yeah, a lot of times they say paying your dues. It is what it is. There's just a lot of girls. I mean, it's paying your dues in the sense of your body evolving, evolving, yeah. getting better, getting better. So, I mean. There's also just people need to understand this there's just a lot of girls yeah so no matter how good you are you just showing up and blowing everybody away no matter how good you are it's safe to assume there's probably going to be 12 15 other really really good girls mm -hmm. too and it's just really hard it's like splitting hairs it's yeah. hard to pick it so I, I used you as an example i was like um you can ask steph but i think she did like 20 shows before she finally got her pro card. Yeah. And she was a very good pro, but it just takes that much time. And so she took my advice, actually, and she's going next year, and she's going to do more shows. Um, but I, I think that it's very, very important that women, and this is not to get people to spend more money on shows or the NPC or anything like yeah. that, but I think that they need to understand, like, it's a process. Like, yeah, I mean, you build momentum. There's experience. I mean, and you, you learn more about your body at every show. Um, and it's, I think, fine tuning your formula. You know, everyone comes up with a formula that works best for them. You actually did have uh, 
because I was there. You had a competitor that turned pro pretty fast, actually. I did? Oh, uh, a client of mine. Yes. yes, I did. Celeste, yes. Yes, very good. Um, yeah, I have. I've, I mean, I've had two girls turn pro. Um, and, I mean, I'm really proud of them because they turn pro naturally. Yeah. Which. The other girl uh, turned pro, I think, at Team Universe, right? I was there. Yes. Or now it's not Universe yeah. anymore. That gets universe. everyone mad yep. when, when you say that. Just yep. Universe, right? Um, so, you... I'm going to go back to the competing for a second, but you, you had a coach, mm -hmm. you went through 20 some odd shows. You did the whole working with a team thing. And I'll touch on this for a second. Um, back then in the, let's say like 2010, 11, 12, 13, I think that range specifically, maybe even a little bit more. Um, bombshell was just enormous. Yeah. Enormous. And you were actually one of the coaches at Bombshell, right? No, I never coached. You were just there. I worked for them for a short while, yeah, um, doing, like, their social media and Who stuff. was uh, coaching when you were working there? It was Shannon. Actually, Jen worked there. Yep, Jen um, Strobo. So, you know, it's kind of cool now that we're all here now, too. So Shannon and her husband started the, the yes. company. Yes. And then, so maybe I'm wrong Maybe, uh, maybe you can help me uh, clarify this. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong then because I thought there was a number of girls that were also coaching. There were some, yeah, coaching, and I think that's how it is now too. They have competitors that are coaching. Was India Paulino coaching? Um, she worked there too. I, I did, yeah, I think she was coaching, but not, not when... There was, was there, also... Sure. Um, there was a girl that I thought was super duper hot, and this is going to probably piss somebody off. I don't care. Um, little Spanish girl. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Starts with a Y. Yorellis. Yure Yorellis. Yes. Was yeah. she coaching? I think so, yeah. I, I always wonder what happened to her. She was beautiful, I, I thought. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. There are, there's a lot of people I think back on, and you're like, where did they go? What yeah, happened? because. And, uh, but, you know, I think it's important, too. People step away. They do, you know, it's a period of their life, and then they, they find other things. Or it, it's, unless you segue, you know, like kind of you were talking about longevity and the sport and all of that. I mean, unless you have something else besides the stage going for you. It's yeah. really hard to have longevity and bodybuilding. You know, you create your legacy in other ways besides just being but on stage. When you were there, so now I know that you were not coaching, but when you were there and you were part of this huge thing, did you yourself think of yourself like, I'm gonna have something like this of my own. Like I'm gonna be coaching a bunch of no, girls. No, the odd thing is, you know, I was building my social media ever since I started in like, the fitness thing, actually. Um, I always saw it as a platform. I always saw it as like business, like a business platform. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. I looked at it like getting my um, degree, basically, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't know necessarily what you're gonna do with it. Um, was I gonna create a product or this? The one thing I didn't think I wanted to do and everyone would ask, I would say, I don't wanna coach. I don't wanna do it. Why? I don't know, I just didn't. Maybe because everyone else did, maybe. Um, I'm really not sure, but I still remember when I got my first client in 2015 and she was actually in Europe in Malta of all places. And I was staying up super late, you know, to compensate for the time change to help her with her show. And I just was like, it, it was right. Like, I was like, this is, this is for me, you know, like I, I loved it. How did that, how did you start with that first client she just reached out to you no actually a good friend of mine um uh Sadiq he introduced me to her and that's how I got that and it just snowballed and you know it started with the competition girls and honestly now you know six years later I have more lifestyle clients than I do com competitors those are the best they are they're mm -hmm. gratifying super gra not, I mean they're all gratifying in their own way but you know watching and I take that approach with my comp girls too. Like, you know, I want them to focus on themselves too, not just their physical, but watching a woman that's, you know, 40 pounds overweight lose that. It's like, you don't just see the body change. You see like every week, like the confidence and the email, the tones to the emails change and the mental shifts. And like, you know, this, it's just a beautiful thing to watch. Now it gives me chicken skin. <laughs> 
I want to go back for a second. I I I actually loved my lifestyle clients yeah. also, but when you first started coaching, and you had this this competitor, right? Did you think to yourself, I'm gonna keep on competing while I'm coaching, or were you gonna step out? Because for me, I got so into coaching mm-hmm. my people that I would be at shows with my laptop. Yeah, I'd be competing but I'd still be making sure I was staying mm-hmm. on top of their plans and whatnot. And a lot of people said, well, don't you feel like that takes away from what you're doing? Personally, I didn't. Yeah. Um, but it is very hard to do both. So did you think to yourself like, all right, I'm gonna, for me, I, I set a number of like, I, I comp- competed until I was 31, mm-hmm. but I was like, I'm gonna stop when I'm 30 and then go full time into this. Like, did you, did you kind of have like a cap? I didn't um, because I didn't know that it would become what it is now. Mm -hmm. I had a few clients, I was doing it, you know, but I had other stuff too. Um, And I wasn't, I was competing a lot at that point. So I didn't have that many, but as I started to take time away from, or off away from the stage, I started focusing more on business, family, you know, things like that. And then that's when I kind of did shift, like, you know, how I, I wasn't competing that much. And actually I compete, when I went back, in 2019, after a couple years away, um, I coached Celeste at, we were competing together at the Pittsburgh Pro. I remember that. Yeah, and that was, I mean, you know, it's, and I think honestly she placed better than me. It was actually kind of funny because it's like, you know, people are like, isn't that a conflict? And it's like, no, because I'm gonna always give her the best, you know, for her. And it was, it was actually kind of a cool experience to share with a client. I, it's unique. I don't know that I've actually heard of it before. Did you guys um, have separate rooms? Did you, yeah, yeah, we did. And were you just going back and forth a lot? Or? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, backstage and, you know, and, and that kind of stuff, you know, just texting. and. Did, sh- did she ever say to you that it, it was a concern of hers? Like, no. no. We talked about it before. Um and, you know, I mean, there's full trust there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and that's, I think it becomes like, like you said, the loyalty, mm-hmm. personality. You get a, like, that's, I've always built the relationships with my clients more. So I think, you know, you get a feel for the, the person. And I've had experiences in my career where it's like you see the sabotage yeah. almost that happens. But that comes down to character. Which is so person. screwed up. It is. And, you know, I've watched it. I don't, I mean, I think maybe I've experienced it at times, um, personally, but for the most part, you've, I've watched it, you know, and I think that's why we even addressed it. Cause it's like, I would never want someone to think that that would be on my mind or, you know, and it's disgusting to think about that because really, although that you're the coach and you're deciding ultimately how they mm-hmm. look in a subjective sport, it's really neither of your you know it's not how good of a coach you are or how great of a competitor is she is because in the end it's complete strangers Mm -hmm. that are deciding your guy's fate yeah so that is why for me when people would say like oh how could you like help somebody that you were competing against i would explain to people we're not going in like wrestling in a in a cage or or boxing each other we're gonna go and we're just gonna stand on stage and I might think that I look way better. She might think that right. you know, they might think they look better, but it's completely up to. Yeah. You know. Oh, and it's also who else is there. Yeah. How do you compare? And it is very difficult, I think, to to judge bikini. It is it oh, is gosh. extremely yeah. difficult. It's gotten worse, I think, over the years too. It's like competition just gotten better and better, and it also I think that the the actual uh, judging changes oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Bodybuilding, for the most part. It's going to be the same. Mm-hmm. Get bigger, get leaner, yeah. get harder. Yeah. Um, but with bikini, sometimes they want you a little bit more muscular. Sometimes they don't want you mm-hmm. as muscular, which is extremely frustrating. And the reason that I'm even bringing this up now is because I coached you for a little mm-hmm. while. And at the time, the judging was a lot different than it is mm-hmm. now, for instance. I don't even, I'm trying to think of, uh, do you remember what year it was? when we were working together? Um, 
well, I, at 2017, I took the two years off. At 2019 was when I came back for the Pittsburgh Pro. Mm -hmm. And that was when we, you know, I mean, you, you were over like time. I mean, you've always kind of been there with your input and stuff, but that was when it was like full bore. And I, I think what happened was when I left at, you know, stepped away at, in 2017, the look was uh, very like get smaller. They yep. wanted to streamline your muscle, streamline, streamline. So I took two years and just like kind of reduced my leg training, did the bands, created yep. the band, did all that like kind of stuff, streamlined my legs. And then, you know, we went and saw Steve and I can't remember, it was like the first time in my whole time. And he was like, you need more quads. So I was yeah. like, I've never ever been told I need bigger quads. And even after that show, Sandy, I talked to her right after and she's like, you need to go back to how you were. And it, it's like, you know, you know, you put in all that time and you, you followed the advice, but the look had changed two years later. It was extremely frustrating for me um, because I had been friends with Stephanie for a long time and I had been... Um, in your room, for instance, uh, at, I believe it was, was it the New York Pro? New York Pro. Uh, yeah. Where you wound up getting second place. Yep. And I really thought that you should have won. I believe India Paulino won. Mm -hmm. And they liked her a lot. Yep. Um, now, I don't think there's anything wrong with me saying that I just don't think that you should have won. Um, in fact, I actually never really thought that India Paulino was that good. I think she's very beautiful. Uh, and her stage presence was outstanding. Mm -hmm. Very, very sassy. Had her unique. own uh, unique identity. Yeah. But from just a physique standpoint, I actually felt there were many girls that had better physiques than her. And so being there, uh, watching as, a, as also a judge, not just a, uh, a coach, mm -hmm. I felt that you were the clear winner. And a good friend of mine, uh, J.M. Mannion, um, who, obviously, for people that don't know, aren't yeah. going to know who he is, but his uh, father is the president of everything, <laughs> and now his son uh, is the vice president, but he's judging all the shows yeah. now. So at the time, I mean, Tyler was probably like it's in like high school. High school. <laughs> <laughs> so JM had said to me, I think Stephanie is, is going to win. Yeah. And so for you to get second place, for me personally... Uh, I was extremely angered and upset. And at the time they had said, okay, we're going to start toning the muscles down. Yeah. So you had your time off and then coming back, I was just like, we got to make you smaller. We got to make you smaller. So to, to hear the opposite after all that That's hard. was yeah. really, really for you, I'm sure very frustrating for me as a, as your coach and as somebody that had been through it for a while. And as your friend, I was like, man, we just had this whole <laughs> long ass process yep. to now say, go back to how we were before. It can be really frustrating, you know, but that's part of it too. You know, you sign up for it. That is true. And the mentally, the ones that can't handle it, they, they, they do, they leave. And that is a, that is a very, I think, profound thing that you just said, you sign up for it. And you know, you can't get too mad at something that truly is subjective like that. And there's people all the time that are like, it's fucking bullshit, it's rigged, it's this and that. And then I, I just have to say to them, then just don't do it. Yeah, it's not for you. you know? If you can't handle it, it's like stocks. If you can't handle the like highs and lows, you shouldn't do it. And you should go do something where you can have a clear set way to win based on either points or... Right lifting or right. crossfit is great for people on that sense subjective so it's if yeah. you're going to do something subjective it's like being a model mm -hmm. right you can you can go to some of these um runway shows and if you look at the girls there'll be girls that are bald there'll be girls that are very very ginger mm -hmm. completely different looks but it's a matter of it's subjective like what the people look yeah. at now, you go to a powerlifting competition, it's pretty simple. Whoever lifts the most weight, right. boom, you win. If that's the kind of mindset that you have that's going to make you happy, mm -hmm. that's what you got to get into. Yeah. For me, personally, I couldn't really take that, which mm -hmm. is part of the reason why you I retired. Yeah. And, and you know, people would say to me, like, are you mad? Like, you should have beat this guy. You should have beat this guy. And I actually always believed, for the most part, that I was the best. 
And if they didn't see it that way, then that was their decision. Mm -hmm. So the, I was okay leaving. People say to me all the time, they're like, do you miss it? Do you miss it? And I'm like, nope, not at all, <laughs> actually, because I don't want to lose to somebody that I don't think is good. Right. Now, if you are going to sign up for that, you've got to understand that yeah. going into it. Do you have these talks with your competitors when they're getting into it? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I have so, I have, have girls that have pretty good mind. They've their mindsets, I think, because the way I coach them, and I share my experiences. Um, it does. I haven't had to deal with too much of that. There, there's obviously disappointments and and frustrations and things when things don't go as you would want, um, but. I feel like that's what I'm able to offer them is mm -hmm. like that perspective that it's like you got to use each thing as a stepping stone and learn from it and, you know, keep going or decide that it's maybe it's better that you, you know, you step away because it's causing you more. I think that's like anything. If it's causing you more stress, mm -hmm. they, they bring that up with people that have eating disorders. Like if, if it's exacerbating that for you to compete, you should not. If you've had that type of uh, nutrition struggle, you probably shouldn't put yourself into the competition world because it's going to probably make it worse for you. Absolutely, um, that's, that's very, very important advice yeah. too. Were you, when you were competing, were you ever at a point where the stress or the, the, you know, the idea of being the best that you could be or them seeing you differently, did it ever get to you where you were like, I just can't fucking take this anymore? No, honestly, I mean, when I'm like really honest about it, I mean, I eventually realized that it was stuff I had going on in my own life and it was distracting me from doing as well as I could every show. And that was, that was actually the point where, I mean, I also got very sick with um, MRSA, mm -hmm. but that was all about when I started, I pushed it and then I took a break after all of that. And I, I was like, I got to focus on my health and I got to focus on figuring out personal life stuff that was going on because it was, I would like get second, second. I think I have like eight second place finishes as a pro. And it just became frustrating in that sense where I realized like, I'm not, sh I'm not able to get my best because I have too many other things going on. And when you stepped away, were you good? Were you like, okay, I'm done? I mean, I missed it um, in some regards, but I enjoyed the balance. Like even now, I enjoy the balance. Um, I think about it, obviously, because I still feel like I, I didn't actually reach my full potential um, with it. So I've never really officially like retired, but like at the same time, I'm not like jonesing to get back up there. I mean, I never say never. Yeah, I mean, you could always, there's master's divisions. Mm -hmm. You could always, you can do this forever. Yeah. Um, switching away from all the competition and, and uh, coaching and everything else, you are a mom mm -hmm. and uh, you have one child, correct? Yes, he just turned 18, so I have an adult, basically. You have an adult now. <laughs> and um, what was it like competing uh, with a child versus now just working and having a son? Well, you know, I mean, at the time, I wasn't, there weren't a lot of moms. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for a long time, Janet and I were the only moms. Um, now a lot of people have kids, and they're doing yeah. it. And I remember, you know, it, we always kind of related in that way because it is, it is harder. And when, when you were, not to cut you off, when you guys were competing, um, I believe you're close in age. Were your kids close in age? They were, I think, 11, she was 11. They were maybe five years apart, five or six years apart. Have, have you um, met each other's children before? Yes. The, we, um, so in 2015, Janet and I traveled the world together. We went from the Arnold, Ohio we both were gone for 21 days. It was the longest time I had ever been away from my son and I mm -hmm. believe her as well. And so we, it was nice to have that mom that understood it was hard, you know, and we went from Ohio straight to Australia. Yep. And then we went straight there to New Zealand all the way back. I mean, I remember the way back, it was like 40 hours of travel. It's a and, lot. I mean, it, it was a really, really cool bonding experience. Um, 
but when we got back from that at the airport, we have a really cool picture of the four of us. Her, her daughter was there and my son was there. Did so. you think back then, which wasn't that long ago, but did you think back then that she would wind up being uh, Miss Olympia? You know, I always believed in her. It was funny. Um, I think I did. I mean, I was always a, a fan of her because she was so genuine. Mm -hmm. And I always want that, you know. And it's the same with, like, Angelica. You know, like, they're just great people. Um, so you always want to see them win. And I always I always love Janet. I think her physique has evolved. I think it went very much from, like, the pageantry look mm -hmm. to she has added muscle. And, it, you know, there. I think it because she was so um like consistent with everything she stayed in it to where her body eventually met the look they wanted yeah because there were times where her, her she wasn't as they wanted more muscle so mm -hmm. she wasn't it wasn't her time yet but i think that's part of why you also have to look at it like if you stick with something long enough it could be your time so do you feel over the years i didn't want to get too deep into all the, the competing stuff because it is very subjective. But do you think over the years where she is now versus where you were when you were competing, do you feel that, you know, you are on that, that level or were on that level of a competitor? Do you feel like your oh, look was just too much different back then? I like, think back then, yeah, I was super competitive. But now I feel like there's – it's so different. Um, I mean – even like a couple years ago, I, you know, I felt like, man, I don't know. Like it's, it's a different ball game now. So let me ask you this. Who do you think? And of course it's very subjective. When you look at all the bikini competitors over the years, this is a, a question that you can give more than one answer to. Okay. Who do you think was the best? Oh God. <laughs> um, that's tough because I think there's different elements to so many of the physiques. I think as far as like who held that title very well, mm -hmm. I think Angelica set a really, really good precedence. Um, I think Janet's gonna do a good job. Also, she has a really good background with, you know, uh, holding titles and she's won other things before. So I think they have that aura and class that you want you know, the Do you think ambassador. that your relationship with them or the fact that you know them as people sways your decision? Probably. I think so. Yeah. I'm not putting you on, yeah. the, on the spot. No, probably. Because um, I could see the way that your eyes light up and the way yeah. that you're speaking when you're speaking of them because you know them. Yeah, that's true. So just looking at paper. More than physique, yeah. Just looking at paper, just looking at images, I can give you my opinion. I personally thought that... Um, Nathalie Mello was just an amazing. Yeah, I forgot about I, her. I really just thought she was absolutely incredible. Um, and overall, I have consistently said, um, and I, I actually enjoy like arguing it with people, but I actually thought that Ashley Kaltwasser just, just dominated. That's true. Her butt, I mean, she does have that bubble butt. That and the abs, just, yeah. um, the confidence on stage. I felt that she had a very good combination of athleticism. Mm -hmm. Um, but the right amount of curves. And I really, if I had to pick one of them, I'd pick uh, Ashley. Okay. And I will always be uh, a big Ashley uh, fan and supporter. Now, I also had the, the pleasure of having her work for me for a short amount of time. I remember. And she was a true professional. And I thought that she was going to be um, an asshole actually <laughs> and she wasn't she was actually super respectful um showed up early at the expo stayed till the very end much like how jay cutler um yeah. always was and i really respected that and i liked that a lot um i i actually thought that um in the newer uh era that uh, Issa was just outstanding I yeah I, I agree with that her I, I remember when before she even when she was still kind of becoming a pro her I mean her it's just her proportions though mm -hmm. there it is it's it's almost unattainable though for anyone that's I think part of why it probably got you know phased or trying to go for a different look because unless you have that genetic yes. structure no one can uh, no one can achieve that very very true yeah. now I think that uh Janet, from a physique standpoint, 
had a more attainable amount of muscle and look. Yeah. I also would say though, um, as far as, and by the way, this, a lot of things that I can, that I say could be taken the wrong way and it is what it is. It's a matter of who is sensitive and who's not. Uh, of all of the people that I presented trophies to, mm-hmm. uh, I said this many times. I, I I really thought that Janet had the most beautiful face that I've ever seen. Yeah, she was very pretty. So I think that that's very important. It's from posing a, too. Yeah, she always killed her posing. But from a marketing standpoint, she, not only does she look healthy, they can promote that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. and it's a business. Well, that's the thing people forget. That is the biggest thing, you know. Um, now. Uh, I, I, I don't want to rush this last part. We are a little bit pressed for time, and we've talked a lot about competing and mm-hmm. everything else, but I would like to just briefly talk about, um, you know, your personal life, where you're at, where your goals are, where you're going. You have a son who's uh, 18. I know this. Uh, you were engaged. Yes. Um, now you're not. You, I assume, but this is just me assuming, uh, haven't thought about, Okay, like, I'm going to meet a new guy, and maybe he'll want children, and I'm going to have kids again. Like, Um, you're at, I don't want to blast out your age either, if you don't mind talking (laughs) about it, because you look very young. Uh, Also, in today's day and age, I'm 40. When I was 25, I thought 40 was old as fuck. Now that I'm 40, regardless of how I feel 80, I feel 40 is young now. Yeah. So, uh, you're not 40, you're younger than I am, but... Where you're at in life now, where do you see yourself in like five years, 10 years? Is it too hard to think about that now that you have separated? Yeah, things are, you know, I don't think I'm even there thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I think I went from thinking things were going to be one way to I'm trying to adjust adjust still. Um, I did always think I'd have more kids. Yep. I always wanted more kids. Um, I was always willing to do it, which I know some people have thought is crazy because I did just turn 39. Yep. And, you know, they're like, really? I was like, yeah, I mean, I loved it. And if you've never experienced it, you don't, you don't understand the cost benefit there. Yes, I don't care about wrecking my body because you won't wreck your body having a kid. Um, the joy you get, it's just the most rewarding thing. So I was always open to it. Um, I, I, obviously not going to force that it has yeah. to be with the right person. Um, nowadays too. I mean, if it happens, I mean, there people are having kids a lot later. Yeah. Um, I guess what I've learned and what I keep learning, it seems like the lesson just keeps repeating is you just can't control life. Mm-hmm. Like it is always going to throw you curveballs, And, you know, I think it's 2020 taught a lot of us that, you know, you just have to, can I swear? Fucking surrender? You can swear like, as much as you want. I, I say a lot of fucked up shit. Um, I mean, you just have to, you know? It's like, um, it's not always easy shit, but, you know, you just, you gotta just um, let life kind of play out. Do you like being in a relationship full-time versus being single? A lot of the, yeah. the women that I work with, they have a problem with being alone. You know, I used to, I did, um, different parts of my life. I always, and I've always been geared towards a relationship. Mm -hmm. I I do like that. I think that's ultimately what makes me the happiest, but you know, I would say, what was it? 2021 now. So like three years ago, I went through a really bad, you know, relationship, you know, if you remember, and it was a lot of, um, it was a catalyst for me to start really like looking at myself and figure figuring out why I'm putting myself in these situations that aren't healthy. And it was through all of that that I started to be able to get to places where eventually I was okay alone. And it was a good feeling to be like okay with it. Um, and then I just, I, I would end up in relationships you know, but it was that knowledge of knowing like, okay, I can do it. Like I have a business, I have a son, I'm more than what I am. You know, I don't need to be with a man to feel whole or loved or whatever it is. You know, I guess what it was, I found my self love, you know, it's cheesy, but that's what it came down to is like really being able to cultivate that for yourself. Um, And I think it's an ongoing thing. I think. Do you ever feel like like I said, you're not old. None of us 
think of ourselves like, oh, maybe I'm getting old. Like, do you ever feel like you have to have somebody around because you don't want to be alone? Yeah. No, I mean, it's, n I mean, the honest is like, you like company. I do like company, but I have a son, you know? I mean, that's one thing that I realized too, is like, I've, I've always had that company love, you know, and I poured, when, once I started pouring all of that onto him, you don't, I mean, you don't need to have someone else around to be mm -hmm. happy. And I think that's very important. I, so, <laughs> I personally like being alone so much that I, I almost think that it's possibly bad. Yeah. Um, I, I truly, now that I'm older, I actually like being alone more yeah. than I like being around uh, anyone else. And I think possibly it's because I'm never alone. Yeah. Um, and that perhaps if I was alone for a long period of time, maybe I would be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I have, as long as I've known you, you have always been, it seems like, in pretty long relationships. Yeah. So perhaps you just need to have that alone time for a while. Yeah. And I think that, um, without getting all philosophical, I think that you learn a lot more about yourself when you are alone. I agree with that, yeah. I think that people get very, I don't want to use the term codependent, but I think that people, they start adapting to the person that they're with. Yep. And you know, you, you change a little bit for the, each person that yeah. you're with. Sometimes you change for the better. Sometimes you change for the yeah. worse. And you take a little bit of each person and you kind of grow. But if you don't have that chunk of alone, alone time, time. Yeah. you don't really get to learn yourself. Now, I also am going to say something that people might think is kind of fucking hilarious, especially girls. Uh, you may look at it a lot differently. I don't think that you can really learn much about yourself. And a lot of women tell me, because I am getting sexual here for a minute. A lot of women tell me like, oh, I'm not that kind of girl. I'm not that kind of girl. But I don't think that you can learn too much about yourself unless you experience a bunch of other people. And I'm not saying that you should go out and just start banging a bunch of guys. Right. But I just don't think that you can really learn that about yourself. Now, I'm not saying from, you know, a, a perspective of numbers, right? I know guys that have been with hundreds of girls. And that doesn't make them any better guys. In fact, a lot of them are scumbags. Right. Uh, now I know girls that have been with hundreds of guys. Many people might say, okay, that girl's really, really slutty. Yeah. Um, on the, on the other side, I actually know girls that know a lot of guys and they're amazing. Yeah. Um, I just think that if you don't experience a bunch of different kinds of people, you're not going to be able to figure out who you really are. It's also what you're compatible with. I think it's not, do, do just you think now, that you, this is a weird thing to, to ask at the end of the show, but do you think that you really know who you are now? I think I do. Yeah, I really do. I think I've put in a lot of time and work and um, counseling. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, people don't talk about that stuff, but, you know, I did, I did go through a lot of abuse growing up, and I had an abusive marriage with my son's father, and it, it did, my life shaped me, towards very unhealthy relationships yeah. and it was a that is probably the biggest struggle that i've had to overcome in my life as an adult is learning how um to find healthy relationships and recognizing the ones that are not and it's tough do you um, feel now that you have really figured out yeah you do I do. I mean, I think you always keep learning. I think there's still things that obviously I, I struggle with. Um, and I think it's like anything, it's a new, like when you're trying to ride a bike, right? You're going to fall down a few times. Yeah. And I think I got to a place after I put in a lot of time and, and work on myself to realize what I will tolerate, what I won't, what's healthy, what's not. And, you know, I've made some mistakes even after that. I've, you know, I've made some decisions and choices that weren't the best. And I think it's just you get, instead of sticking around in those situations, you learn fa like how to get out of them faster mm -hmm. um, by choosing to keep experiencing, you know, and giving people, I think that's my biggest thing, you know, is like I have such a big heart yeah. that I always, I don't give up on love. Like I don't like just get cynical and be like, oh, you know, you know, it's never going to happen. I, I just always keep trying, and I just have had to learn to be smarter 
and more protective, I guess, of myself and who I allow into my life. I think that you you also see the good in people. Yeah. I think that you focus a lot, uh, which is very great and honorable. It can be a weakness, yeah. though. I know that yeah. it's happened to me plenty yeah. of times. You start to overlook bad behavior because you see the good things in someone. Well, I hope that you never stop being like that um, and that you just learn from it. Um, I think that I have met, well, I know that I've met a, a lot of uh, good and bad people. Mm-hmm. And I've met a lot more bad people than, than good people. And I will tell you that I'm not uh, embarrassed to say that when I found out that you were uh, engaged, I was very happy Mm -hmm. and very proud. And I was also uh, a little bit sad. And the reason that I was sad, and this may sound silly to people that that are, are listening, is I was a little bit sad thinking like one of the very, very few amazing ones is gone forever and that's no uh no disrespect to any people that i've been with because i've been with some amazing women also and i've been with some really really bad ones uh but it is really really hard to find truly good people in this world and i know what you're trying to say i was like all right well i hope that she's making the right choice and now um You've learned, like you said, we'll see what what the future holds for you. I know that no matter what happens, you're always going to be a true, like, shining star in this world. And I I just don't want that to ever change about you. I don't think that it will. And um, I will wrap up the show by saying that I feel really lucky um, to have had the time that I've had with you and to have the friendship that I have with you. And I feel that I am absolutely a better person for knowing you and having you around. Thank you. And I think that um, it's important that you hold that really tight and don't just let anybody Mm -hmm. in. I think that's important for everybody to know. Um, But you can't ever let it change you. And I've said this about myself. I will always keep putting out love the same way. Right. I'm not going to let anybody... uh, dull my shine or one of those cheesy things I know that you saying. hear people yeah. saying. You dull your sparkle. Yes. You got to stay <laughs> true to who you are. And you just got to keep learning and evolving. Yeah. And when you showed up today, I was so happy to see yeah. you. And I think that anybody that knows you is, is going to be the same way. Yeah. Um, so with all that being said, thank you for coming on to the well, show. Thank you. And thank you for being such a big part of my support system all these years. You've really, you have. It's been an honor. I didn't get too into uh, saying all the different things that we've done because I didn't want it to be like a, oh, here's all the stuff that PG and Steph have done. So I wanted to just talk more yeah. about you. We've done a lot of cool shit together and we've, we've been through a lot and maybe on another show we'll talk about some of that stuff. I wanted to talk just about you. Thank you for yeah, thank you. Um, letting us in. And also, I know we ended on a much different note than we started. I think that you put out really good information for everybody, and um, I appreciate you opening up. Yeah, of course. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. That is Steph Mahoy. Get her name right. And um, if you want more of her, let me know. I'm always happy to do stuff with Steph. She has been with the company for over six years. Yeah. That is fucking amazing. (laughs) It's crazy. And I don't ever plan on, I I don't ever plan on stopping doing what I'm doing. I hope that you want to stay a part of it. And this is how I'm going to wrap the show up. This is a pretty cool story, a cool story. So one of your old, uh, we'll call it managers, um, said to me, um, I don't know what you have said or have done to Stephanie, but she will not leave you (laughs) and i said good that makes me very very proud because i don't want her to ever leave it's loyalty loyalty. i am a very loyal person and i think your values is you know loyalty as well and that's the company's you know loyalty is everything and i think especially in this industry we're in people jump to the next best thing Mm -hmm. They're always looking for the better opportunity and you don't realize that what you have in front of you sometimes is so much better and if you just 
I mean, over the years, you look back now, and I'm like, you know, it's so it, it's irreplaceable. You know, it's very, um, it's very special, and like you said, rare. It is very rare, and that is the best way to end it, Steph. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I love you very much, love and you that too. is it. Peace out, bye.